reception that she got from it. Um, and they met a few times, they met at a TM meeting, Transcendental Meditation meeting, um, but nothing had really happened until a particular night that I was staying at John's Pete house. Chatton. I'd been staying with him for months, and we'd been up all the previous nights, and I was ready to crash out. John could stay up two, three nights on the run. <clears throat> and he said to me about 10 o'clock at night, do you mind if I get a girl over? And when he told me it was Yoko, I was most surprised. I said, oh, I didn't realize you fancied her. And he said, well, I don't know. He said, there's something about her I like. Um, you know, while the wife's away, I may as well find out what it is. That's Pete Shotton talking about... Pete Shotton's here with us today. Hi, John. Hi, Lena. Wow, the energy that uh, came upon us early this morning for Pete's visit. Mm. <clears throat> Hi, Pete. Hello. How are you? I'm just great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Now, in this video that we just had on, you were talking to a talk show host about, um, and Pete is St. Peter. Now, I, I had to be a saint, let me tell you, <laughs> when I was dealing with John and his, uh, his, 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 his extramarital affairs at the time. Yeah, that's what Pete was talking about. It, John's cracking up right now. He's just shaking his head because Pete's been waiting a while to get in. Mm. And, um... You want to dish on John's relationship with Yoko today, I understand. Well, I wanted to, I want to do, uh, hi everyone, it's Pete. <laughs> I want to do a, uh, a reading. I, I, I get a kick out of the tarot uh, cards, the beetle cards. So I wanted to definitely to uh, exploit or expand on those cards, right? Because they, they will definitely uh, draw some awareness to certain situations. But yeah, I was let here with you on 4th of July last night, and uh, oh, he's like cracking my back. Yeah. I'm opening up your channels, Lena. All right. Yeah. Pete's cracking my back. Well, that's really all of us. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to uh, tell you that uh, 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 I saw you last night with your reading with John on 4th of July. And I talked to John about it, and I said, you know, you guys talk an awful lot and dish an awful lot on Lena's soulmate, Christopher, but you really kind of pussyfoot around Yoko. And uh, she's still very much alive and well down there, too. Uh, well, she's getting really up there in the ages, and we'll be crossing over not too long from now. Uh, and we all know that, and she knows that. But um, you kind of pussyfoot around her, and I don't know really that there is any reason to do so. And you shouldn't feel that you can't speak up on her too, right? So you ha talk about your challenges with uh, Christopher, and he takes it okay. And now, John, with your, uh, with my kind permission, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Well, we thank you, Mother and Father God, and the first card that jumped this morning was the Emperor, and that is the Father, and it is the Father, with the Father comes the Mother, and with the Mother and the Father comes protection, love, and guidance. So this is a divinely guided uh, uh, reading, and everything is good, yeah. Nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to worry about, no. Uh, you know, Pete, yes, Johnny, uh, I don't really... I think Lena worries more than I do. You know, you, yes, I know. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to tell your energy apart because it is so very, very intertwined. Uh, so let's just take a card to get us started, but I think I know where I'm going to start. All right. Death. And, uh, you know, okay. Well, we just talked about the fact that Yoko's going to be crossing over soon. and But John stays in contact with her now the same way that you you and Christopher are in contact. You know, it's a, it, it's just, you know, she Yoko doesn't publicize it because I tell you the truth, a lot of the things that John tells her these days is kind of like to get her shit together. So she's not going to publicize their psychic relationship and say... Oh, yes, I do hear from John, and John tells me to get my shit together. Right. Because her ego is still huge. Right. This is Pete, yeah. They have a similar... Well, you know, I take on Johnny's... You know, what do you want from me, Lena? This is the way channeling works. Uh, you know, so... Okay, 
John, when John, so the death cult in this case represents uh, that the Beatles died. You know, really the Beatles did die the day she walked in the door. Wow. <laughs> Talk about not pussyfooting around. Well, these are things that I wouldn't say in life because I had too much respect for him. And I didn't. You know, he understood that too, John. You knew that the Beatles died, that that was going to be the nail in the coffin, that one coming in. I did, but yeah, but you had no choice because you needed a female channel and there was really no one else picking up on Lena at that time. That And you didn't want, well, you were very picky about finding someone that, I'm going to say it, go ahead, that you were not particularly attracted to. Physically. Oh, God. <laughs> it's okay, Lena. It's okay. This is good. Come on. She was a dope fiend when he first brought her in. I never... I was always very careful about how I spoke about her. He made me take her to the store to buy her clothes, right? He didn't even come. Right. <laughs> He said, she don't know how to dress herself. If she's going to start going around with me, you got to Pete. And I was his PA at the time, personal assistant, best friend PA. You know how long that lasted after she walked in on the, the, the scene? Yeah, you left pretty soon. Yeah, because she was ordering me around like I was a nigger to her. Mm hmm. And I don't mean that in, except that she wants to scream about women being the nigger of the world. Well, Pete Shotton was the nigger of Yoko in her fucking uh, her thoughts and, and, and actions. Oh, my God. <laughs> I could not stay on there. All right. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lita. Stop making me crazy. This is making me nervous. You can air this. Lena, what's the difference? I wrote a book too, right? Yeah. Yeah, Pete's book is great. Take another card. This is all about the Yoko this morning. All of it. She hated Paul. Oh, God. <laughs> she really hated him. Oh, my God. And she, she hated me probably worse. Hate. Well, she was extremely insecure about him having any loving friendships that would detract from her. You know? Okay. Page of pennies. Yeah. So I had to take... Okay, let's get back to the... I had to take her to buy uh, the clothing, right? Because she didn't know how to put a, an outfit, an ensemble together. And, you know, John still had his... Uh, uh, keeping up appearances to go on, right? Mm. So he said, well, you know, she's going to start coming around with me, so I really need her to look like, you know, the, the mate of a beetle, the, you know, the woman worthy of a beetle. Wow. Ego, John. Uh, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It was an ego-driven. But I, I was, I know, you're in the public eye and you needed to, yeah, and she looked like a vagabond. Right, so I, me, Pete, I took her to the to the clothes there on Carnaby and everywhere, and uh, she was buying. She was picking out all these weird things, like see through, uh, sh weird shirts that sh and that she would want to wear without a bra. I said, "You can't. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Mm. You got to let me pick this stuff out." And I had to pick her out a couple of nice tailored outfits, and she acted like you know. She was really, you know, lowering herself to allow me to make those uh, decisions. And she'd be nodding in and out because, you know, I mean, this was like, I really couldn't believe that he was oh, going to take up with her. But she, he said, Pete, she's the one. For now, she's the one. Mm -hmm. And I had to listen to that because I understood the dynamics of the situation. But then, okay, take, take from there. All right. Night Cups, George hated her too. <laughs> well, I know, jo yeah, George couldn't bloody stand her. And he even took me aside and said, she's, she's getting, he's getting into the dope with her. That's, 
You, you really think th that's going to kill him? I don't care what happens to her, but what about him? And I said, you know, George, we're going to have to stand back and watch this unfold. Mm -hmm. We've got to stand back and watch it unfold because there's no telling John what to do. And this seems like a situation that is completely, he never was in anyone's control. Well, now he's definitely not. And here we go with the moon. I said, leave it up to God. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, the last of the boys right there. And the only unseen thing in that picture is her. But she was right there in that middle of that situation, in the middle of those sessions. And instead of Yoko in this particular card, they show a heroin needle. Mm -hmm. And that's the card that says it all. It's up to the moon now mm -hmm. how this plays out. Because the sun is really... It's sinking at this point. Oh my God, I feel like I got chills. Well, we kind of was all kind of scared, but at the same time, John was the guiding force behind the entire project, uh, phenomenon. He's the only reason it existed. So nobody had a say in which way he was gonna go. And everybody knew that he was involved in supernatural phenomenon that really we could try to understand it all we want. You're talking about his relationship with me as a spirit entity? Yes, as a fifth dimensional and higher channeled entity. We understood he was experiencing that. We understood that this was his reality. Was it your reality? It had to be because it was his. Well, John has, has written um, blog posts about that you guys saw. And yes, John's mind is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. So when he brought you into the fold of his inner circle, of course, yes, we understood. We saw you. We spoke to you. Just the same way that Christopher speaks to John through you. And yes, this was a reality in all of our lives. But we also understood that nobody else you're in their right mind. No, not in their right mind. Nobody else without an open mind would grasp. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this human world is completely befuddled and besotted with power and negative energies that cannot or will not grasp the supernatural or the paranormal. And that's where Yoko had the upper hand. She is a witch. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaspheming her. Or putting her down. She calls herself a witch because she's a witch. And John said, I need the big guns for this because I need this connection and I'm losing this connection. Did heroin, can I, I I'll, I'll, uh, did heroin do any, no, heroin did not enhance the connection. John, do you want to speak? Um, at first it did. Not enhance it, but it made it feel like it. Heroin is a uh, a sneaky a sneaky seducer, mm -hmm. and you can think that it's doing good things for you, and it's not. And that's basically where heroin uh, and me, um, you know. And then we parted ways, you know. It, my life became a a struggle against it, and yes, she brought it into my life, and that was a problem, and that was. <sighs> something that I always kept in my mind after that up until the time that I crossed over and now even too she brought that into my life and that's not a good thing right Lena you were saying to John I, I hope you don't mind I eavesdrop on old yeah that's okay I know you all do mm. that you never see pictures of Yoko holding or fondling a pet or an animal no I had never seen one picture of that you know, and that's that's a huge part, Lena, of your life, right? Mm. 
you're an animal rescue advocate. You, this is what you do with with John and with Christopher. You are a guardian angel of animals everywhere. You're an angel and a patron saint of uh, of all animals. Mm. And you have never seen a photograph, and there's millions of photographs of Yoko Ono out there holding or being kind to an animal. Well, I did see one picture of her standing next to a donkey with, yeah, that was it, with John out in Tittenhurst, but really nothing else, right? But, you, but, it, but it made such an impression on you that you remember that one photo of her standing next to a donkey, right? Okay, what, that'll, that, that speaks volumes and we won't say more. Another card, all right. Are you mad at Yoko? No, I'm not mad at her. Um, but I am calling a spade a spade. And she really didn't like me because of my love for John and my devotion to John. And really, anyone that was loving or devoted to John, she didn't want them around. And that, you don't have that with Christopher. He wants you to be loved. He wants, you know, theirs was a soulmate relationship that by all appearances, everyone thinks it was fantastic. Far from it. You're lucky, Lena. Your relationship with Christopher is much more evolved. Okay. You know, everyone thinks the great thing of John and Yoko, but there was really a mess. Because I had to leave. Yeah, I missed him so much, Lena. I missed Pete. Why didn't you stay in touch over... It just... It was painful for both of us. Because we both knew what a mess it was, and it was embarrassing. You were embarrassed, John, right? I, it was. It was... The mess. Here's the one, eat at home. Right, and there's a picture. Okay, this is a good one. There's a picture of Linda and uh, Linda and uh, and Paul, and and that and theirs was really, you know, a, a healthy, beautiful marriage, and one that John wanted in his life. He wanted. A, he he looked at Paul's life. John, I'll, I'll let you speak on this because you're sitting in a wheelchair in that picture, and where you know, yeah. Okay. I, a cripple, a cripple. Mm -hmm. I was a cripple in my relationships because of my inability to get past the fact that I only wanted Lena. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a hard way to live uh, because you want what other people have. And yeah, I really wanted that. I wanted, and I, the whole, the whole nine yards, I wanted the, the, the love, the physical love. I wanted the animals. I wanted the farm. I wanted the children, a lot of them. I wanted a wife. I wanted a wife like that. Like that one. Right, and Yoko knew you wanted a wife like that one, and she was not that wife. Okay, next card. Oh, well, I'll just say, oh, Pete, why didn't you go? I had other, um, I, I, I thought about going to India. Mm -hmm. Thought about going to India. But it was a crazy time, and I had the store. There was, you know, the it's sketchy now. But I, it probably should have gone. Mm. But you can't say should have, right? But yeah, India did a lot for him. And while he was in, di in India, he was ready to take the next step. And that's that's another thing. Yoko, I, I was well aware of everything that was going on. Because in those days, he told me everything up until Yoko showed up. So when she was contacting John in India and sending him postcards and stuff... um. He he was, you know, making noises like, yeah, she could be an interesting channel. She could be a vessel. I think I, she might be one. But I didn't take him too seriously. But yeah, that's when the seed was really planted. When he was far away and she had a place to send him daily correspondence and really plant the seed like, I'm the one for you. I'm the one for you. This is all happening. You're in India now so that I can infiltrate your psyche. And when you get back, I'm the one for you. And that's basically... She's a witch, Lena. 
witches are that powerful? You know they can be. Uh, yeah, one, I knew a one, like a practicing fledgling witch who tried to perform a love spell, um, for me one time, a long time ago. And I know that now, I know now that that was wrong. Yes. And the results were disastrous. Yes. The results were disastrous. They broke up my band. Uh, I know that it was a powerful spell, but I also know that it was dark energy and it was stupid. And I prayed to God to forgive me for even letting that person. Well, she was nuts. And at that time, so were you. Yeah. But yeah, witches are to be taken pretty seriously and to be avoided. <laughs> I find. Yep. Because you know what happens when you hook up with a witch? Do you think that that's a direct result? I'm saying that what comes around goes around. And she was dabbling in a lot of dark energy and dark magic. And Yoko, uh, just before John's demise, she was traveling around going to some very powerful voodoo women asking them to cast spells for her and giving them a lot, a lot of money. And I will tell you one more thing, and that's like assigning a pact with the devil. As a matter of fact, that's something that she did. Even though she didn't have the bravery to sign her own name on the contract, she had an assistant sign the name for her, and he met an untimely end, unfortunately. Are you talking about Sam, uh, John Green, the tarot card reader, that was a mess. He never should have gotten involved with her. John, you're very quiet because Pete has something to say. He is St. Peter and he's talking about some important things. And there's people out there who are putting credence in spells and they can do it all they like. But they should know that there's going to be a price to pay. And sometimes it's a very dear price. But you always have to pay it, no matter what. It's karma. What you put into something, energy-wise, you will get it back, and sometimes in manifold. Oh, yeah. This video is running long. Pete, uh, we might run out. Okay. I just want to say I love you. I love you, too. We love you, Pete. Yeah. And John, I love you, too. This is a heavy read. Yeah. And um, I will just say that the last time I saw John, the uh, anger, indifference, and, um, and uh, disrespect that I felt from Yoko was absolutely, uh, it was embarrassing for John. I, that's all I know. And that it was absolutely unwarranted. And it's just unfortunate that our last earthly visit, she couldn't even bring it upon herself to behave in a humane way. After all that time. Yeah. She's not someone you need to pussyfoot around, Lena. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not saying these things. We are. And I needed to come through. St. Peter Shotton. Yeah. All right. John. Yep. Off we go. Off we go. chatting right and then I went to bed next morning I got up early from the eight o'clock and John was in the little room off the kitchen and uh, I thought that he got up early and he astounded me said he'd been up all night and that Yoko was still upstairs and just something in his tone of voice made me realize that there was something because I said you know oh have a good night then you know nudge nudge wink wink and he didn't react he was flat about it he 